Hi, in this video, we will see how we could design a state feedback controller for the mass spring damper system. So the outline of this video is the following. We have a physical system which is mass spring damper. And we need to design a state feedback controller for that system. So in order to design a state feedback controller, we need to have the state space model of this system. So we have a modeling. We will drive the differential equation of the mass spring damper system and then we will get the state space model of the system. After that, we will design the state feedback controller based on the pool placement technique. And finally, we will simulate the system using MATLAB. Now, in the beginning, let's explain what the basic element of the translating mechanical system. Now, we have the first element, which is the mass. The force in the mass is just the mass multiplied by the accelerator. So this is uh, how the force generated in the mass. Now we have the second element which is the spring. The force in the spring which is the coefficient of the spring K multiplied by the displacement. And the third element is the damper. And the force in the damper is the damping coefficient B multiplied by the velocity. So this is the three element which is the basic element of the translating mechanical system that we needed in order to drive the differential equation of the system. Now considering we have this system, you have a spring, uh, we have a, a mass and there is a force applied to this mass and because of this force so the mass will move in the x direction, uh, x direction and also uh, the mass is connected to this wall by a damping damper and the spring. Now, in order to drive the differential equation of that system, we need to have the three-body diagram of the system. And as we can see, we have the force in this direction, and we will give positive for this direction and negative for the opposite direction. So the balance equation based on the Newton second law, which is the force minus the force in the uh, damping and minus the force in the spring equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration, which is the second derivative of the uh, position. Now, for, for the purpose of developing the state space module of the system, we need to have the x double dot uh, like uh, in this direction and the remaining parameter in other side. So we'll just divide it by m. So we have like x double dot 1 over m, which is the force multiplied by the force minus b over m multiplied by the velocity x dot minus k over m multiplied by the x which is the position now from this uh, differential equation we will start to build the state space model now if you want to have more information about the state space modeling i will link uh, i will provide the in the description link that i uh, explain the state space in more details now, I will assume that you're already familiar with the state space modeling. So, in the state space modeling, we have two equations. The first equation, which is the x dot, and the, uh, it's like uh, the, the changing or the derivative of the state. So, this is the derivative of the state, and it has two terms. So, the first term is the relationship between the derivative of the state and the state. And to explain this relationship, we have the matrix A. We call it the dynamic matrix. The second term is the relationship between the derivative of the state and the input to the system. So in our case, which is the force. So B is the vector to represent the relationship between the derivative of the state and the input to the system. Y is the output equation. Represent was the relationship between the output and the state of the system. So the C is the output matrix and also if there is any relationship between the output and the input to the system and D represent this relationship. It's the forward matrix. Now in order to develop the state space model of the system, we need to know what's the state of our system. So we have two states. The first state is the displacement of the system. And the second state is the velocity of the system. And the input to the system is the force, which is the, th uh, the, the input uh, to the system. 
Now, because we have two states, so the derivative of the state, the derivative of the position is x dot, and the derivative of the velocity, x double dot. So we need to find the relationship between the derivative of state and the state. And also we need to know the relationship between the derivative of state and the input to the system, which is the force. Now, based on this equation, which is only we have the equation for x double dot, and we don't have any equation for the x dot, so there is no relationship between x dot and x, and that's why we have zero in this position. But what the relationship between x dot and x dot, it's the same, it's itself, so that's why we put one. So this is the first row in the A matrix. Now what the relationship between x double dot and x, so if we go to this equation, so this is the x double dot and this is the x, so it's minus k over m. And what's the relationship between x double dot and x dot? So again, if we go to this equation, we will see it's minus b over m. So this is the dynamic matrix which is represent the relationship between the derivative of state and the state itself. Now what's the relationship between the derivative of state and the input to the system which is the force? And again, for the x dot, we don't have any equation. For the x double dot, we see from this equation that it's 1 over m. So we already finish with the first equation. So for the second equation, which is the output y, if we look to our system, we have two states, which is the displacement and velocity. But we are interested in the displacement. So we need to see what will happen to the system, to the position of the mass, if we apply this force. So that's why, in order to design the C matrix, which is the output, and because we are controlling the displacement, so we have one for the x, because we already were interested in that x, but we give zero to the x dot, because we are not interested in the velocity. So we are not care, we don't care about how the velocity, how the mass is moving, how fast, but we are interested in when, uh, when it stops, what is the, the, the position of the mass after we apply the force. Now from this, we could see that A is this. So this is the matrix A, this is the matrix B, and this is the matrix C, and D is 0. So this is what we need in order to uh, simulate the system in the MATLAB. So after we finish uh, the slides, we will go to the MATLAB, and we will investigate the system for step input. So we will see how the system will behave if we apply step input, so which is the force, and then we will decide uh, uh, design a controller. Now, in control system, there are two problems: the regulator problem and the tracking problem. And I already explained this in uh, the state feedback controller, which is I will link in the description the video for that. But just for a quick uh, summarize the problem. In the regulator problem, which is uh, try in this uh, problem, we, we need to control how the transit response of the system, and we need to guarantee the stability of the system. So if we consider that our response has two parts, the transit response and the steady state response. In the regulator problems, we try to shape the transit of the system. We need to improve the response the the time response of the system in the transit phase and also we need to ensure that the system is stable and we will use the pool placement technique to change the the, the location of the pool in order to improve the transit response of the system in the other problem which is the tracking problem we need to follow a reference so for example if i apply a unit step input so i need my response goes to one so if there is any error between the desired output and the actual output, and we call this error is the error of steady state. So in our case, we will try to improve the tracking response of the system by using the forward gain. Now, the pole placement is technique used to change the a closed loop pole into the desired location using the gain, the gain matrix, which is Kx. So by using this Kx, uh, if this is the open loop matrix of the system, and this is the B, and we can't change A and B. So by using 
the gain matrix K, we could change the location of the pool in the closed loop uh, system. So imagine that you this is the open loop pool of the system, and by using the pool placement and using the, the gain matrix K, we could change uh, this position into the desired position how we would like to have the the new position uh, the new position of the pool of the system now uh, again i already explained the state feedback controller based on the pool placement in my channel and i will leave the link for explanation i will assume that you already familiar with the state feedback controller based on the uh, pool placement with the forward gain so if we consider that our control law is the forward gain multiplied by the reference minus the the gain matrix multiplied by the x and this is the structure of the state feedback controller so this is the state space we take the x we multiply by the feedback gain matrix we forward this with the uh, reference value multiplied by the kr which is the forward gain so this is the u which is supplied to the system in order to improve the performance of the system so if we replace this control law u by this term we will get this final equation and if we compare the x dot with the controller and compare with the open loop so the a in the open loop is a which is the matrix a and the matrix a in the closed loop which is a minus b k x so the difference now because we cannot change the a and b so the difference now with this kx so by changing kx the location of the pool will be changed and also if we see this is the matrix b which is the input matrix and by multiply it by the kr we could change the gain in order to remove the offset uh, the the in order to uh, obtain zero steady state error steady state and we have a tracking so this is work in the regulator problem and this is work on the tracking problem now this is the MATLAB code, as we will see in the MATLAB. So first we need to decide our new location of the pools, and then we will use the uh, the command the place in order to find the k, the gain matrix x, kx, and then we will find the new a matrix in the closed loop, and this is for the regulator problem. Now in order to improve the tra the the steady state, the tracking problem, we will. Uh, find the kr which is the forward gain and we will use the dc gain which is a command in the matlab and this is get the dc gain of the system and if we multiply the kr by b we will have the final closed loop system so we change the a and b and we will apply step input and we'll see the difference between the the system in the open loop and the system in the closed loop now if we jump to the matlab i already write the code i will just simulate it and explain it for you so in the beginning we have CLC in order to clear the command, clear all to remove all the value in the workspace and close all to close all the window in the system. We already have the parameter, the system parameter. We already so this is the parameter of the system. The mass is three point six the coefficient of the spring 1.8 and the damping is 0.5 so we apply this the, the system parameter 3.6 1.8 and 1. Uh, and 0.5 and then we will enter the this matrix a and b and c and d so this is the matrix a this is b c and d and then we will see how the system will respond in the open loop so this is the open loop response of the system. We will use SS to transfer this ABC to the state space model. And the, the command this step is work with the state space. You could apply like transfer function or state space. So if we run the code, now we apply a unit step input. So we need the system is responsing like when. But we can see that the system is have oscillation. So this is the position of the mass. So the mass will move and uh, move in this uh, in this way, and then we get settled down in the point five five. So the transit response of the system is not good, and also the steady state there is an error steady state. 
So that's why we conclude we need to design a state feedback controller for our system because the response of the system is not good. Now we will start design the feedback controller, state feedback controller. First, we will decide what's the closed loop. It's up to you to choose any uh, closed loop pools of the system. So I will select like minus four and minus six, and then by using the command place. I will find the gain, which is make the system has this pulse. So we apply A, which is the A matrix, and B, and the desired pulse, and then the MATLAB will find the K. So if we just run the code until this stage, so this is the gain because we have two states, so we have two K <coughs> for the first and the, the, the second K for the second state. So this is the state feedback control for our system in order to get this pool of the system. Now we need to find the, the, the new A which is after, uh, after the controller. So the new A which is the closed loop A, the open loop A minus the open loop B multiplied by the gain Kx. Now we need to have the system with the A, with the closed loop A. And then KR, which is when the DC gain of the system. So we need to find the DC gain, which is to remove the offset, the steady state error. And then we will, so if we run the code until this step, now you can see, so this is the feed, the feed, the feedback gain matrix, and this is the forward gain that we need in order to improve the transit response, and this is for the steady state response. So this is for the regulator, and this is for the tracking. So now we will build the closed loop system, which is instead of having the open loop A, we have the closed loop A. Instead of having the open loop B, we have the closed loop B, and the CD is not changing. Now if we run the system, so this is the open loop of the system. This is the response of the open loop without controller. And as you see, there is a trans, uh, there's a oscillation and also error steady state. And this is the response of the system with the controller. And as you see, the system is smoothly goes to one without any oscillation. We could see both of them in the same plot. So we just say hold on to see the effect of the state feedback controller. So the blue line is the open loop of the system. And the green line, you could see it. the green line is is the closed loop, and this is how the improvement of the system uh, by using the state feedback controller uh, based on the pool placement. So the objective of this video is that we have a mass spring damper system, and we investigate the system when we apply unit step input, and we see the system is not performing well. The performance of the system is not good. So we decide to design a state feedback controller based on the pool placement. We just select any pool. So for example, instead of having this, you could have minus 2 and minus, for example, 8. So you could have any closed loop pool you would like. And then you just run the code and you will see how your system uh, improved by the state feedback controller. So this is all about this video. Uh, thank you for watching.